Hello there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, the Raspberry Pi Foundation have just released a new bootloader for the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Raspberry Pi 400 that allows you to boot and download and install an operating system on your Raspberry Pi without needing an SD card that you've programmed in another computer. In fact, you don't even need an SD card at all. During the initial stages, you can just get it up and running uh, just by plugging it into the internet. Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the traditional method of getting an operating system onto your Raspberry Pi is you take another computer, even another Raspberry Pi or a Linux, Mac, Windows machine, you use the Raspberry Pi imager or you download something manually, and then you copy that operating system onto a micro SD card, which is what the Raspberry Pi imager does, and then you take that out and then you go over to your Raspberry Pi and you plug in that new SD card and you boot it up and hooray, you've got an OS. And that is okay, it's simple enough, it works well, it's reliable, but it means you still need to have another computer which means if you were somewhere and you just wanted to get a Raspberry Pi up and running, let's say you were making some project somewhere, or even you know a weather station or a, you know whatever you're doing, or the fact that you just don't want to do that step, you just like to plug in your Raspberry Pi and get it up and running, well, now you can. Now every Raspberry Pi has a bootloader. That's the first code that the board runs when it first gets switched on. It's the code that actually understands how you read uh, an SD card or how you access the USB port so that you can then boot up further into an operating system. Now there's a new version of the bootloader that's come out that when there's no SD card, when it doesn't see a, a USB uh, device connected, it goes, oh, what should I do? I know, I'll try to connect to Raspberry Pi uh, Foundation over the internet and ask, can I have an operating system, please? It's absolutely brilliant. So this little thing on itself can actually connect up to the internet and download an official OS onto the board. Now, if you want to try that out, of course, you're gonna to have to change the bootloader, which means in this very first iteration, you're gonna to need to get an SD card with the new bootloader on it and then reprogram that. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. But in the future, you can imagine that all Raspberry Pi 4s that come off the production line, Raspberry Pi 400s, and then of course we hope further, the Raspberry Pi 5, whatever else plans they've got, will have this kind of bootloader pre-installed on it. Okay, so to get a new bootloader on the Raspberry Pi, what you need to do is program an, a micro SD card with the new bootloader. You then plug it into the Raspberry Pi and it kind of flashes over the new bootloader automatically. So how do you do that? Well, you need to get the latest version of the Raspberry Pi imager program. When I started my one up, it said, oh, there's a new version available, took me over to the website and I would have downloaded it. You need to do the same thing. Make sure you have the latest version. Then once you have that running, you need to go to choose OS then scroll down to MISC, miscellaneous utility images, and then go for the beta test bootloader. After you've picked that, you need to select the order that you want to boot with, and certainly right now, you just want to pick boot SD card. There are, of course, more advanced options there. And then, of course, you want to select your storage and then write it to the disk. Now, once you have your new uh, micro SD card, you go over to a Raspberry Pi, you put it in there, and you power it up. What will happen is the green LED light will flash in a consistent manner and then the screen will go green to show that the writing of the new bootloader has been successful. Now what you need to do is take out that SD card, you don't need it anymore. In fact, you could use it to install the OS in a moment if that's what you want to do. But with no SD card in there, and this is the amazing thing, no SD card, no external hard drives, no USB, just the board on its own. You just got to make sure you've got a keyboard plugged in and a wired Ethernet connection plugged in, just power on the board. And when you do that, it will actually now connect and start to this network over the internet install process. Now to go, the first steps, what you need to do is press the shift key for three seconds. This is not something you want to happen automatically or without your kind of you know agreement. So you press the shift key for three seconds and then after that you press the space bar to confirm and then the Raspberry Pi will go off and download a version of the Raspberry Pi imager for that board and then actually just use that Raspberry Pi imager as you would on any computer. And to do that, that means you pick the OS and here in this example, I am picking 64-bit uh, Raspberry Pi OS, which is now an official version. It's finally come out officially. And then of course, I'm choosing to write to a micro SD card. In fact, I'm gonna use the same one that I used to flash over the new bootloader. And then you just hit the right button. It will download the image, write it to the SD card, verify it, reboot, and then up comes Raspberry Pi OS. Brilliant. 
Now, network booting in general, so that's booting from a local server in your local area network is a great technology. And now being able to boot and install over the internet is a great idea. If you want more videos on network booting for the Raspberry Pi, please do let me know in the comments below and I'll see if that's something I can look into. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you try out this new feature on the Raspberry Pi because I think it's pretty amazing. If you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, Raspberry Pi videos, videos about processors, system on a chips, ARM, RISC-V, anything, then hey, stick around, subscribe to the channel. Uh, don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter, at Gary Explains, and I also have a newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, uh, no spam, but you will get the email. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.